Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. This week we have quite the milestone ahead of us. We're going to be going from France to Spain, crossing the Bay of Biscay, quite possibly one of the most notorious stretches of water anywhere in the world. This will be our first passage longer than 36 hours. We have 300 miles to do to our destination, a small town on the north coast of Spain. With the current weather forecast, it should take us around three days. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021, we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. The Bay of Biscay has a bad reputation stretching all the way back to the era of the square riggers. They could become trapped in the bay due to the prevailing westerly winds. Now that is not so much a concern for us, but what is a concern for us is the continental shelf. Along this curve here, the water depth changes from many thousands of meters to only a few hundred meters. And apparently that shift can cause quite the bumpy sea state. We're in early September right now. According to Jimmy Cornell's World's Cruising Routes, the best time to cross the Bay of Biscay is from late May till July. So we are a little bit off season, but you can cross the Bay of Biscay any time of year. It's just if you do it in the fall, winter or spring, you can get stuck waiting for a weather window for a long time. We have a weather window the next three or four days. It is far from the perfect weather window, but it is a weather window. The wind is going to be variable both in terms of speed but also in terms of direction. The wave period has a lot to say when it comes to comfort. As you can see it starts out nice and high but it does dip down a bit. With those shorter wave intervals we will get more roll but if we look down here in the vertical acceleration you can see that we're below 0.2 g's for all of our passage. According to Predict Wind, a vertical acceleration below 0.2 g's means less of a risk of seasickness. So uh, <coughs> fingers crossed. Because of the light winds on the first and possibly on the third day, there is going to be a bit of motoring involved in this passage. But I think this time of year, it would be foolish not to take the weather window. If we don't, we could risk getting stuck in this part of France for a pretty long time. <laughs> We just left Brest. That was a pretty uneventful departure. A very smooth departure, but yeah. there was absolutely no wind, so that's kind of cheating. Yeah, but it was nice. But Bay Biscay, are you excited? Very excited. Yeah, I'm excited too. Nervous, but also excited. Yeah, a little bit nervous. I mean, the weather should be fine. Yeah. It's more, it's like, it's only the sea state on the second day that has me a little bit, but eh, yeah. it should be fine. Yep, and we'll see. What did you just ask for? I asked for a hat. Oh, and why do you need a hat? Just because my one ear is cold. <laughs> oh, you're, what, it, you're not saying it's maybe cold outside? No, it's not cold out. It's just my one ear is cold. Oh. Just the one, it's so not cold. So you do get cold. No, no. There you have it, people proof Mads is not a polar bear and he does get cold.
So far, so smooth. It is D-E-A-D, -E dead calm out there. There is not a wave. The sail is just flapping about, but I mean, besides the wind, it's a really nice day out. The sun's shining. Matt's taking a little nap over here in the cockpit. Got my hat on. So yeah, it's going good. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't sleep great last night. I had a hard time falling asleep because I was like, it was like those first day school jitters. Like I, I couldn't get to sleep. And then once I was asleep, I was kind of tossing and turning just because this is my longest passage. I haven't gone longer than an overnight passage. So three, three, four days-ish is definitely long, but I'm excited. But I think maybe we should check in again like tomorrow evening to see how I'm doing, to see if I've lost my mind yet. Cause this sweet little sleeping baby angel is the one who's gonna have to deal with me if I go crazy. Just kidding, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it'll be good. I just have to get to crocheting and listening to my true crime. It's about 10 hours later. The sun is gone and it's raining a little bit. There's still not quite enough wind that we can actually sail, so we are still motoring. As you can see, we are out here. We're getting further and further offshore. I did bungle our passage through this narrow bit here a little bit, so we ended up finding some current going through there. That slowed us down quite a bit, but yeah, at least we are underway. We're about 20 miles offshore and uh, up until now we've had internet through Starlink the entire way. And uh, we know a Danish boat that is about 20 hours or so ahead of us. So they're basically right in the middle of the Bay of Biscay and uh, they have internet still with their Starlink. So uh, yeah, that's pretty freaking awesome. All praise the amazing Dishy. I checked the latest weather forecast and the wind is supposed to start picking up around 5 or 6 in the morning to the point where we can actually sail instead of motoring. But uh, it is about to start getting dark so let's get the boat ready for night. This is our daylight mode. As you can see all of the white lights are on. And this is nighttime mode with the red lights. Now during the night we will dim the red lights so they're very faint but that causes a lot of flickering on camera so I haven't done that yet. Let's get the nav lights turned on and then we can also go ahead and dim the chart plotter. Good morning. It is 3 a.m. and I just woke up from my night shift. Matt said it was pretty uneventful during his shift. I see one other boat out here and they are bobbing around on our port side. I can see their light. But yeah, nothing's going on out here. There is zero wind and we're going about five knots. So that's pretty, pretty normal. But yeah, zero wind, but the moon is shining so bright. It's really nice. I mean, the sky is completely lit up. Much different experience than we've had in the past. So that's really nice. But yeah, uneventful, so that's good. We're slowly creeping up on the halfway mark. We have about 15 miles to go before we reach it. Right now we are 100 miles offshore of France and uh, we still have internet. That is pretty freaking awesome. This year has been in that position ever since we left France. It hasn't moved whatsoever. Yet we still have internet. I think that's because it's what's called a phased ray. So even though the boat is bouncing around, the dish itself doesn't have to move because the electronics inside of it can kind of point the beam towards the satellites that are sipping past. Hooray for technology, but uh, all is well aboard. It has been down for a nap for the last four hours roughly, and uh, we're chucking along at six, six and a half knots. We should make Gion sometime tomorrow evening at our current speed. There was a little bit of a funny incident this morning. I was awoken around 5.30 to the sound of Ava using the VHF radio. On the other side of the radio, I heard a guy with a thick Spanish accent say, Athena, this is Galileo, Galileo, something like that. We're shooting. I repeat, we're shooting. Ta-da! 
but caused a brief moment of sheer and utter confusion and terror. I thought maybe we'd somehow accidentally stumbled into a naval exercise and were about to be blown to a smithereen. But it turns out shooting is also slang amongst fishermen for putting out line. If we zoom into our track from this morning, you can see that there's a little bump on it there. That is because the guy was putting out line right in our path and he was simply just calling us to warn us to stay well clear of him. Which of course we did, there was no issues, nobody got blown to smithereens and we didn't get anything fouled in our props, so phew. Usually I pass the time when sailing by listening to audiobooks. Today I decided to add another layer of entertainment and hand steered simply just for the joy of sailing. Ava was hard at work on her Merkels after having received no fewer than 23 orders. That is a lot of crocheting. Burr, burr, burr. I don't want to jinx it, but it is 5.30 in the afternoon and we have been sailing for 10 hours, baby. Just sweet, silent, smooth sailing. It's been really nice. We're going about six knots. We have 130 nautical miles to go. We're on a reach right now and it's perfect. It's like a nice 75, the sun's out and the sea state, it's just, we're getting like these nice, big, calm swells. So it's been really nice out here. Hey guys, it is the morning of day three of our Biscay Passage. I'm not gonna lie, morale is low, supplies are lower. Just kidding, they're not, everything's fine. It's just morning, literally nothing has happened. And I think that's a good uh, example, a good explanation of this whole trip. Last night there was zero wind, the water was like glass, which was pretty, it was beautiful because like the moon was shining over the water, but yeah, no wind, but that's okay. We're still moving along. We did see a whale a little bit a ways away um, yesterday. I want to say it was like midday, Mad spotted it and we saw its little spout. So that was cool, I've never seen a whale in person. But yeah, everything's going great. Um, the only thing, my butt is a little sore, so I try to get up and move at the top of every hour. But other than that, everything's good. We got less than 50 miles to go. If you can believe it, we managed to empty out the entire aft cabin before we left in case one of us wanted to sleep here over passage. We didn't end up using it. We just used our regular settee spot in the saloon, but it's nice that it's empty. By some miracle, we managed to get everything to fit in the V-berth, underneath the V-berth and in the technical, but it's nice that it's empty now. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but it's nice while it does. How you doing, boo? Good, good. It's a little warm, but uh, I mean, we're heading south, so maybe that makes sense. How much further do we have? We have 25 miles to go. We've been underway for something like 57 hours. We have four miles to go and we can see Spain. Yeah. And that means new country ritual. Mm -hmm. It took us about 57 hours to cross the Bay of Biscay. We arrived here in Gion, 
um, late last night and uh, this morning we're off to an early start. Something that has been missing aboard Athena since this winter has been her stay sail and today we're picking up the new stay sail. Unfortunately that is gonna involve about seven hours worth of bus travel. Spanish road trip baby! Ow ow! I also just want to point out look how nice Mads looks. He's not wearing a Sail Life shirt, although I love your Sail Life shirts. Look how spiffy he's got a collared shirt on, so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> I'm sure this will ring through with a lot of the guys out there. What is wrong with only owning a couple of t-shirts? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're right, there is nothing wrong with it, but maybe it's okay to have at least one shirt that's not completely epoxy encrusted. Some say encrusted, others say reinforced. Found the bus station. First, look how cool it is. Second, look how giant the bus tickets are. They're like they're the size of my head. The bus was easily the most fancy bus I have ever been in. There were leather seats and there were only three seats on a row. And also each seat had its own little screen with movies and TV shows. The three hours flew past in no time. New sail, thusly captured. Let's get back home. So it turns out we can't get a bus back until four o'clock. So we've got a bit of time to explore Santander. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, but we have noticed one cool thing already and that's the uh, crosswalk signs. First of all, there's a countdown so you can see how long until the light changes, but also then when it's green, the little guy is actually walking. That is so freaking cool and I had no idea that Spain was the leading authority in usability on crosswalk signs. Mads may love that walking man, but I'm a sucker for buildings with any kind of like beautiful window or door. I mean, come on, look at the wood around those windows. Mm. With yet another three hours of bus travel checked off the to-do list, it was finally time to bend on the stay sail. I got a hand from Ava and the sail is only 14 square meters, so it's very easy to handle. And just like that, Athena yet again has a stay sail. The running rigging is all sorted out except for on the starboard side where I need to install one more swivel block. But I can take care of that the next time we've got a couple of dry days. Hopefully we can start using the new sail next week when we start heading towards A Coruña. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going to be the end of this week's video. So we hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more sailing fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you!